Oh no. Last time we did this, I cut him off at 13 slides. Are you ready? Are you finished? <laughs> One okay. Uh, afternoon, folks. So, uh, firstly, a quick note. Um, you can ignore the slides. They're just for Ian. So, <laughs> keep an eye on them. <laughs> um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Sword 2. Um, I should say what I'm not going to talk about, which is I'm not going to talk about Sword 2, the protocol. I'm going to talk about Sword 2, the process. Um, if you're interested in the protocol, it's extremely well documented online. You go to swordapp.org and there's everything you need to know about how it actually works. Uh, what I really wanted to talk about was what an awesome uh, community process Sword 2 has really been. Um, last year, in Open Repositories 2010, uh, I was, some of you who were there would have seen me running around with bundles of paper, handing them to people, demanding that they read it and give me comments. And that was the very beginning of what was the Sword 2 process. And we were soliciting feedback from people in our community to find out what it was we wanted beyond the simple deposit that we had from Sword 1. And throughout that event, I forced people to read this paper and I forced them to sit with me and I took notes about what they thought about it and what have you. Um, and then we took that away along with those comments and we turned that white paper into a uh, GIST press page. Now, I don't know if you've used GIST press. Uh, it's awesome. If you haven't used it, you should. Uh, it's a really good way of getting commentary on your content. So we put up the uh, entire white paper. Each paragraph could be annotated and we sent that around to all of the communities we could get hold of and we got as many people to give us content as we possibly could, commentary on that. And we had people commenting from all over the world. We had people from the US Department of Education. We had people from Australia. We had obviously lots of British librarians and academics and people who were interested in open source all commenting on it. Um, and it was, it was just masses and masses of content that we could use to help us figure out where we were really going with Sword 2. Um, so it was actually only at that point that we even had a project. Before that, we were doing it all kind of based on a small amount of funding to see what the feasibility of Sword 2 was. At that point, GIST funded us for the rest of the year to turn Sword 2 into a real thing. Um, so we assembled an advisory group. Um, the advisory group is open, uh, and it's still, it's still open. So if you haven't been a Sword advisory group member and you would like to be, please do feel free to join the group. Um, it's pretty low traffic at the moment because we're running to the end of the project, but it's, um, it's still there. Um, and that group consisted of many of the people who commented on the white paper and lots and lots of other people who had expressed an interest in Sword. And we went out and we said to people, hey, do you want to come and join our advisory group? And we got a, a large spread of people, very senior people, very technical people. And we had uh, a really properly hard, savage, technical discussion about what Sword is. And we pulled that white paper apart along with those comments. And we built a technical paper and a business case for what Sword would actually be. And then we tore that apart as well. And so the process was really you know, intensively inclusive and intensively um, open to criticism. And it was only at that point that we even battered a beta version or even alpha version of the specification, uh, if I can be so bold as to call it a specification, into shape. And we made that specification available openly on the website, and it's all in version control, so you can look at how it's evolved over time, and you can go look and discover what decisions we made and why we made them. Um, and then what we did is we got a whole bunch of uh, expert developers in this field to come and work with us in implementing that spec in a whole variety of contexts. So we had, I think our development team was eight people. I think certainly probably half of them are in this room. Um, we've got DSpace developers. We've got ePrints developers. We've got Fedora developers, we've got Python programmers, we've got Java programmers, we've got PHP programmers, we've got Ruby programmers, all developing different implementations of the same standard to really prove that it does the job that it was intended for and that it is, in fact, implementable. And as a consequence, what we've actually got is a massive quantity of technology which the community can now reuse to see if that sort can be um, employed in different contexts that we haven't thought of yet. Um, the development team was constantly meeting and constantly taking feedback, and the specification, to, as a testament to that, has changed dramatically since the first version to the version that's now currently on the website, which is still only a beta, incidentally. Um, and that went up um, 
probably as a beta just before OR11. We wanted to go out to Open Repositories 2011 and say, hey, look what we did since last year. Uh, well, we got a really good reception. And as a consequence, people that we'd never heard of came up to us and said, hey, we'd like to implement Sword on our repository, and it's based on Plone, or it's based on Drupal. And uh, we were like, wow, this is really cool. You know, we haven't even considered these as endpoints, and now these people are coming along and asking us if they can get involved as well. Um, so very kindly, JISC have given us a little bit more funding. We're now going to investigate some of the data deposit aspects of um, uh, that, that Sword might be able to support. Uh, and we've also got some money for some client developments. So if you are a programmer, or if you have programmers, and you want to use Sword for anything you can think of, we've got a call out at the moment where you can um, get a little bit of money to take the clients that we've developed in this project and implement a Sword um, deposit in any of your systems. So if you're interested in that, come and see me afterwards. Um, so... The point I was kind of trying to make, basically, hopefully successfully, is that we've really worked hard with Sword to try and make it something which is not a thing which we develop and say, here is Sword, but a thing which comes out of the grassroots needs of this community. Every single use case that we could pull out has been represented. Uh, every single person who wanted to be involved was able to be involved. And I think what we've got is something really cool. And what we'd like is for you guys, as the community, to continue to contribute that to that by taking it and giving us more feedback and using it, hacking it and giving us new versions and telling us how it's broken and how it's brilliant. Um, I haven't told you what Sword is because that's not so important. Uh, it's CRUD for repositories. Um, we just need you to be involved in doing that. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm 14, minutes, 14 seconds early. I've got five seconds left. So, um, anyway. Hi, Spy. <laughs> Thank you.